Good morning, and uh, today we want to have just a little quick conversation about a couple of things. And you know, we're going into a world that's uh, changing very fastly. Things around us are changing, and so forth. And uh, some incidents that's happened recently to really make some things change. Of course, the one thing on our mind is the virus, how it has uh, really changed our daily lives and the thing that we do, uh, how we do many different things. Uh, the social issues, some things that have happened recently have really uh, changed some things for us and all that. And we can go on and on with the list of things that we're seeing changes that are taking place every day. But, you know, one thing that doesn't change is the Word of God. Uh, you know, the Bible is here for us and, and the message that God has given us, it does not change. I want us today to look at a couple of scriptures that are good for any time and we need to be reminded of these scriptures. Uh, and they're scriptures that are familiar to all of us, and most of us can quote some parts of all of, the, of these two different scriptures. The first one is Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. As we think about these in the, in the first part of it, says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You know, we must surrender ourselves. We must give ourselves to God. We must give God our best. We must give God our heart, our inner being. We must love God with all of our affections. Everything that we have must be poured out into him. And with all our spiritual being and all of our mind. We must surrender our entire being to the will of God. And all of this is to promote the honor and the glory of God. So we are, as we in these scriptures, to give ourselves to God and to promote, to promote God uh, in this. Then it says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When we think of the word neighbor here, we think of fellow man. We think of everyone. Not just someone, as we hear the, normally hear the term neighbor, we think of someone just living next to us, but as our fellow man is all of us. To love our neighbor is to have the purpose of heart to do him good. We won't need to do good to our fellow man at all times. To work for his happiness and well-being. We need to try to try make life pleasant and happy for everyone that we can. As we labor for our own well-being and happiness, we should also do this for our neighbor. One who loves his neighbor as himself can put away angry feelings, forget wrongs in order to help him. We can love self only by loving our neighbor and our enemy. So as we think about this and the things that are going on, and we've heard the scripture mentioned many times in the last few weeks of some of the things that have been happening, but this is very true, that we need to love our neighbor, we need to leave our, love our fellow man, we need to try to uh, promote that they can see God and Christ within us as we do these things. So as we go through life, as, as we want, as we treat other people, think how we want to be treated. If we get into situations where it may be some conflict or maybe be some pleasantries, think about how we would like to be treated if we were on the opposite end of that. And let us always try to remember to treat our fellow man with kindness and goodness and be a Christian. The second scripture I want us to look at is one that we hear a lot. And most of us can quote part of it uh, by memory. Or as we get started, you can start saying or filling words in. And that is John 3, 16 through 21. For God, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believeth in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. God is the greatest of all. You know, as we think about that, God is great in so many different ways. Let's look at that, that scripture when it says, for God. God is the greatest lover. You know, he has to be to do the things that he has done for us and all that. He is the greatest love. So love, God hath the greatest love. 
So we look at that, we, we can see that in what God again has done for us and need to always remember that, that he has the greatest love. The world, the greatest company. When we think about company, we think about fellow man, fellowship with one another, association with other people. It is, you know, the world is the greatest. That he gave, that is the greatest act. You know, he gave his son to us. So we think about that, you know, it's a, as humans and as a father, it's just inconceivable almost to think about that. But to think that God gave his son for us that died upon the cross is only begotten. That is the greatest gift. The greatest gift that he could give us is a way for us to live and to have the remission of our sins so we can spend eternity in heaven. Believe it. The greatest simplicity or very simple. All we need to do is believe on him, do the things that he would have us. On him, the greatest attraction. Jesus is the greatest attraction. That we should not perish. That is the greatest promise. That we will not perish if we do the things that he would have us to do. Believe on those things. and But have eternal life. That is the greatest possession. Heaven is the greatest possession that any of us can have. We think about ownership of land and other things, but a possession or part of heaven would be the greatest that we could ever have. So if we live in faith and do God's will, that we should have a home with thee in heaven. As we go forward, let's remember our fellow man. Remember these scriptures that to treat your neighbor as ourselves. Think about how we want to be treated. Think how God would want us to treat someone else and that he gave his son for us, that if we do the things that he would have us, that we might have a home with thee in heaven. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so again so thankful for this day and all the blessings you've given to us. So thankful for everything that you have. We know that we're in a world right now where things are seen to be turned upside down. Help us as Christians to do the things that we need to do to let your light shine during this time. And help everyone to try to remember that if we come back to your word, you have the guidance there for us and the things that will help us to live a better Christian life. We ask you to be with on all the ones of our congregation and other places that are going through sickness right now, treatments or tests or many different phases. We ask you to be with on them, the health care givers, the families, and all as they support them. We be with on the ones who have recently lost loved ones. We know we've had several in this community to pass away. And Ask you to be with them and be with their families as they go through this time to learn to live without the ones that they have loved. Be with on our congregation here as we're going through things that are a little bit